My quest for free energy began with understanding that pristine hydroelectric power enabled by the rain cycle is free. I wrote the cycle equations which were confirmed correct by a Princeton PhD. He cautioned that my equations also indicated that the COP for the rain cycle is less than 1.002, so no practical machine could du duplicate the process. We agreed that the problem was not absolute conservation of energy, but that free energy is limited to small secondary reactions. Generating hydroelectric power would be easy if we could change the mass of water or change gravity. Free energy from the rain cycle actually comes from partial pressure buoyancy effectively changing acceleration from gravity. Hydroelectric power is severely limited by 100% relative humidity and the relatively few hills where rain can be collected. All electromagnetic energy also comes from secondary reactions, but limitations are nowhere near so severe. Since we have reached the limit of hydroelectric power, we now burn oil and fight wars to the demise of our planet to meet our insatiable need for energy. Is there another way? Both the equations and experimental results seem to indicate the answer is yes. I made a generator that seemed to have a COP of 1.2 and showed it to a New Zealand PhD. He told me about Murray's obscure patent doing slightly better. He suggested that I find the secondary reaction in Murray's invention and consider combining it with what I had. Little did I realize then that the two entirely different devices produced excess energy in the same way, or at least in accordance with the same equations. Many more experiments were required to understand why. I built this small gap device with a useless CLP of 1.2. Like Murray's invention, all the excess energy was lost to resistive heating and motor inefficiency. It took four years of experiments to realize the important similarities of the devices. Both devices use E-core outputs with effects that Flynn called parallel path. Flynn reportedly now has a similar COP in a motor. All three devices use a passive rotor. AC and DC fields are produced solely on the stators. Flynn and many others have struggled with the problem of disengaging a magnetic field in primary reactions. Murray found a way to avoid the problem by using anisotropic orientation. Murray's solution to avoid disengagement altogether was by far superior, albeit in a limited secondary reaction. The Kiwi's advice to isolate the free energy reaction in Murray's device was finally taken. I call this the Newtonian conundrum. A 100% linkage across an air gap with dissimilar poles can be achieved with a coil or with two different material magnets. The linked flux will have higher density on the pole with the smaller area. This attractive force will be higher on that pole in spite of the smaller area. A thin steel disc will be attracted to the smaller area pole. This experiment demonstrates that the lines of flux are not Newtonian tensors with exactly equal and opposite forces at the ends. This non-Newtonian effect may be the explanation for all magnet motor, perpetual motion machines, and generators that violate conservation of energy. My derived equations don't explain the effect, but they do define the reactions in this gap. Integrating the two basic principles is conceptually illustrated here. The blue arrows marked A represent my generator and the red arrows marked B represent Murray's primary reaction. Murray's secondary reaction might be classified as type A. Murray's total reaction is an out of phase combination I call type C. A full type C reaction involves complete out of phase switching between type A and type B reactions. A keen eye would notice that there are two type A reactions and they are in repulsion, while the singular type B reaction is pure attraction. An attraction-repulsion cycle is thereby established. In the energy venue, this may be equivalent to water being elevated as a partial pressure vapor and coming down as a liquid. Faraday's equation is fundamental in that it establishes the units of electromagnetic voltage. The total derivative to determine voltage includes a partial derivative to account for changes in permeability. 
Permeability itself cannot be changed, but materials or assemblies can be made anisotropic. Voltage can then be produced with changes of the orientation angle. Murray's type A reaction requires flux to transverse his rotor laminations. Essentially, the same loophole exists in Lorentz's fourth equation. Most of my experiments failed because I used the simple form of this equation. Three devices using passive rotors in accordance with the loophole have had success. Another way of expressing the loophole is that torque is only generated with reluctance changes in the stator to rotor gaps. Homopolar rotors have constant gap reluctance and produce no torque. However, voltage is produced from both gap reluctance and permeability orientation changes. Murray's test results seem to be fully explained. Five requirements for super efficient generators have been identified. This syncopator version of Murray's generator incorporates the requirements to produce a full type C reaction. The, this version is homopolar. It generates voltage solely by changing anisotropic orientation. Output is through a pair of e-coils. Out of phase repulsion is involved. AC and DC fields are both generated on the stator. The evolution of Murray's design to this stage, where five requirements are fully met, is shown in part two. One might say it is foolish to open source this design. That issue is addressed with understanding the requirements opens the floodgates for many better designs. Murray merely proved 20 years ago that they will all work. The desired changing flux paths are achieved and it would be difficult to argue that voltage is not produced in the output coils. One might ask where the energy comes from. The answer would be from bringing voltage and flux in phase without Lorentz forces involved. Conventional logic confirms this when it says conservation of energy requires those back EMF forces to generate voltage. We choose to violate conservation of energy by eliminating back EMF. At least two entirely different alternatives meet all five requirements to also be classified as brushless homopolar generators using anisotropic rotation to produce voltage. Both have a much higher specific wattage and none of the manufacturing problems of this design. One or both of these alternatives will be on the open market 55 days after an investor for each is found.